Chrissy. Well, a new year can mean a new you. Transformations don't always have to be physical. Sometimes they can be mental. And we're helping you kick off January, focusing on intentions for the monthly mindset. And joining us again is life coach and author Karen Freeland. Thanks so much for stopping in. Happy New Year. It's great to be back. Yes. Well, as we kind of round out week two of January, maybe yeah. some of us are already dropping our New Year's resolutions, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we can't still set an intention. So tell yes. me why you love intentions. Okay, intentions are really just a statement that reflects how you wanna feel, how you wanna show up, how you want the year to go for you. Yeah. So that might be something like, I want a relaxing and calm year. Or maybe you want an adventure-filled, travel, fun year. There's no right or wrong, but you're more likely to actually achieve what you want in life if you set that intention up front at the beginning of the year. And you find people keep these intentions longer than they can keep a resolution? Yeah, because resolutions, there's a lot of research that shows that they don't really work and people feel pressured to create them. Mm, it's never mm -hmm. a good place for you to be when you say, I feel pressured to change my life or to do this or that. So for me this year, I have been thinking about being more charitable and volunteering more and also having more silence and space in my life. Mm -hmm. So from there, once you have that intention, now you can set your goals and your actions based off of that intention. So then we pull out the calendar, we go, okay, what days are we gonna volunteer? Let's pick up yeah. those shifts. Let's make sure we have spaces in our calendar so we don't have back-to-back -back meetings all day. Yeah, and I think it's nice also just to take a second to think about what are my intentions, taking that moment. Yeah. I know you sent me yours, I thought about mine, so I'm going okay. to focus on peace of mind by not caring what other people think. <gasps> and then protecting that peace with healthy boundaries. That's I why love I decided. it. That is such a beautiful intention. Yes, well, thanks for sharing yours. Of course. Hopefully these are kind of some inspiration to our viewers to set theirs. Yes. And the next thing you wanna talk about, I know a lot of uh, people talk about self-care. I always say self-care isn't selfish, and you like right. to say self-care is self-loving. Yes, because our brains hear the word selfish, and it doesn't understand the word not in front of it. So if mm. you continue to say self-care is not selfish, in the back of your brain, you subconsciously believe that taking a little bit of time for yourself is actually selfish. Mm -hmm. So we're going to completely rechange that, reframe that sentence and go, nope, self-care is self-loving. We know we cannot pour from an empty cup. Yeah. So we've got to do things that feed our soul. There's a lot of talk about self-care in the news and it always seems like it's surface level, right? So it's the mani, the petty, the yep. facial. Mm -hmm. Those things are great, ladies. I'm not saying don't do them, but it has to be something deeper than that. So it might be meditating before bed. It might be just giving yourself time to read a fiction book just for the sake of reading and for yes. the fun of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love to read. Chrissy knows it's about me. I no longer read during the week because I can't stop reading. Right. And I don't get sleep. That's but true. on the weekends, that is my self-care, my self-love, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And then the other thing you were talking about is when it comes to making decisions, you you like to ask yourself the power question. Okay, this is my favorite. I wanna teach you all the power question because it is a game changer. Mm, okay. So whenever we're dealing with decisions, we have a tendency to overanalyze, right? We wanna get it right and we keep thinking of all the options and then we throw our hands up and go, I don't know what to do, so I'm doing nothing. Well, that's yeah, oh, the quickest mm -hmm. way to end up in a default status quo life. So instead, I want you to ask yourself, what would the most confident, successful version of me do in this situation? Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, that will that. change the game because it takes all the pressure off of you to know the answer. You're acknowledging, yeah, I'm not really sure what to do here, but if I knew the answer, if I trusted my intuition, if I was the most confident version of me, here's what I would do, and then you can go and do that. I'm sure once you're making those decisions that way, you're going to inevitably become that more confident version yeah, of yourself. Exactly. You're not really faking it anymore. Right. It becomes mm. a piece of you. I can't tell you how many times that saved my life in my corporate career, just having that approach. Yeah. It's great. Oh, I love that. These are all such great tips. Of course, thank you so much for joining us again this month, Karen. And if you want some more tips from Karen, which who doesn't after today, you can check out her podcast, Rock Your Reinvention. We will have a link on the As Seen On section of foxcarolina.com. Good day to maybe work on setting those intentions indoors as we prepare for that severe weather, Chrissy. And now